How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and welcome back to another episode of Don't Starve Together Mod Light, in which I tried to take a look at some of the more promising mods that I've come across on the Don't Starve Together Steam Workshop. Uh, to get started with, we have a mod right here, which is entirely in Chinese once you download it from the workshop and you look at it in the in-game mod browser, but the name of it on the Steam Workshop is called Bleeding. Uh, this mod is not entirely original. What it does is it ports a certain module from a larger mod called Cannibalism 18 Plus, which was uh, created by Star, Noogle, and Global Shtick. And the part of that mod that was ported over to Bleeding is one, it allows the characters to take damage slowly over time due to open wounds, for example as well as actually leaves evidence of these wounds on the ground. So let's take a look and see what that's all about. Okay, so here we are. Let's uh, let's pick a fight with this pig or something. I want to get beaten a bit. There you can see. Look at all the blood. Leaving a trail of blood after taking some damage from a pig. There you can see. A little bit more blood. And if I fight the pigs, they will yield blood as well. Come on. Come on, stop it. Just like... This is going to be messy. There you go. Look at all that blood. So that's one part of this mod. The other part is, like I said, I'm going to be continually taking damage now. You can see I've bled a little bit there. Even though I'm not getting hit by the pigs anymore, I'm still taking some of the damage from them that wasn't delivered in the heat of the battle. So this is rather interesting. If a pig deals, let's say, 20 damage... Or if any mob deals 20 damage to you, 10 of it will be delivered immediately when they hit you. And then the other 10 would be d uh, dealt over time. And so this can create a problem where if you've taken a lot of damage, you're going to slowly bleed to death. It's not going to be an immediate death per se, because you're going to be able to take more damage than usual. But uh, over time, you're going to slowly bleed to death if you don't find a way to heal yourself. So there are several ways to heal yourself. Uh, a couple of them are the healing salve and the honey poultice. The honey poultice, of course, has a 100% chance of healing you. And the healing salve has a 50% chance. It, the, the honey poultice has a 100% chance of stopping the bleeding, whereas uh, the honey, uh, the healing sap only has a 50% chance. Let's try this and see if it works. Um, so you can get lucky. The, you can also heal yourself using, uh, I think, mosquito glands and uh, spider glands, but they're all much less effective. I think I'm still taking damage. I haven't been listening. Okay. No, I think we're... We've stopped taking damage now, so I won't need to use honey poultice. Uh, yeah, but then they also have this nice, uh, these nice blood effects for the ground. Uh, and one of the aspects to this is that, uh, in uh, especially player versus player mods, the idea is if you get, get off enough damage on another player, you will be able to follow their trail of blood, uh, and that sort of leads you to them. In addition to taking damage over time, though, this mod also allows you to heal like slightly over time. So you'll notice my health is gradually ticking up. So I think in all in all, it makes the fighting experience a lot more visceral and fluid at the same time. So that's what you have right there. That is that is uh, bleeding. Okay, the next mod that we're going to be looking at here is called Rifle, or according to the uh, workshop page, it's called the Mauser 98K Rifle Mod. Uh, it was authored by Snipe and Wilson Khan, and this is another one of those uh, rehashed mods, so to speak. So I originally noticed this in the workshop because it was recently sort of repaired from the original. Apparently there were some issues with the original version of this mod that was originally released back in January of this year. And so another individual went ahead and fixed it and made it compatible with this version of Don't Starve Together. But I, I tried it out and I think it is a pretty fun mod. Uh, right here you can configure in the options the rifle damage as well as the bayonet because there is a rifle and there is a bayonet. The bayonet basically uh, performs as a melee weapon whereas the rifle does ranged damage. And then you also have test mode. What test mode does is it makes the rifle either very cheap or regular cost to build as well as the ammunition for it. So we're just going to leave it at the default. Those were the defaults as applied before, 100 for the rifle damage. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're back here again and let's get the rifle cracking. So if we go into the uh, fight crafting menu, 
You'll see we have some new additions here. The rifle, it costs two gold, one gear, 10 flint, and two boards. The great thing about the rifle is that it actually does not uh, wear out. You Even if you, like it has 0% right now, even if I go ahead and I beat a creature with the rifle when equipped, it's not, never going to actually get destroyed. And here's one interesting thing. If you drop it on the ground, it turns into this rather log-like structure. So th that could use a little bit of work, but in addition to the uh, rifle, of course, uh, we got to get this back here. We also have the bayonet, which can be attached to the rifle by crafting a rifle with bayonet, which requires, let's see here, one rifle and two, oh wait, one bayonet. I actually have two bayonets in my inventory, so we can go ahead and then we can craft that. And now we have a rifle with a bayonet. And the rifle with the bayonet functions much the same as a regular rifle does, except it deals a little bit more damage. It's not very significant, but it is better than just using the rifle to whack away at uh, enemies. So let's advance this a little bit, see if we can find some life out there in the big wide world to actually go and clobber. Okay, so there are quite a few, there are quite a few frogs around here. Let's see, I'm getting murdered already. There, it took about five hits with the bayonet. So we also have some hounds coming in. So in addition to the bayonet, because the bayonet frankly sucks, and what we're here for is the ammunition. So here's here's the ammunition. I think I've got it just in time. Let's see here, I have five rounds of ammunition. Let's go ahead and move the gun over. And it will automatically load up when you do that. And right now, the, the hounds are fighting the frogs, but we can start taking some pot shots at them anyway. There we go, one hound down. Then you'll notice the it also makes the, the rifle also makes the sound that a blow dart makes as well. So there was some sort of small discrepancy there where they didn't manage to remove the audio files for the blow gun, uh, but they did include include the audio files for uh, the rifle. Like they have a, the sound of a shot being fired. So let's just go ahead. Okay, we need to reload. Reloading can be a little bit of a finicky thing. Like when you're actually using the rifle, it will automatically reload when it comes time. Uh, or when it runs out of rounds, because it holds five rounds at a time. She just shot down a butterfly. There goes a frog. There goes another frog. And let's see here, 20% down to 10%. And you'll notice it reloaded. And you, you have to wait for the sound effects to end before you can start shooting again. So like, er, after I take a shot, I have to wait for that sound to complete before I'm able to fire another shot. Otherwise, you'll just try to you know run up to them and whack them with the bayonet, right? Uh, we have one ammo left. We are taking bleeding damage from the other mod that was installed before there. Butterfly down and bird down. So it's pretty fun running around like a crazy redneck with a gun. The ammo itself is relatively expensive at normal price though. Well, I don't know. Uh, it requires niter, so that's one of those more rare uh, minerals. But it requires five flint, two niter, and one charcoal per five rounds. Obviously, I have the... Um, console enabled so I don't have to pay anything for it because we don't want to get bogged down in the details of having to farm all this stuff up. We just want to go on a murderous rampage and get hit by frogs. I keep losing my ammo. The frogs, they steal, they steal my gun's ammo from me. Never put your ammo in the first slot if you're fighting frogs. That's a very bad idea. Uh, let's see if we can find the ammo. It's very small. I think right there it is, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to see. You're not going to easily find your ammo if you actually if you drop it on the ground and uh, hope to pick it back up later. Whoa, 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 whoa. One more round reloaded. Um, and that's pretty much all this mod does, to be honest. It's it's a fun thing, though. Let's see, because right now, like, I, I can't equip the ammo. The only way to get the ammo back is to, like, switch the gun back over. Like, I can't have to take it out of my hand to refill it, like I said before. But then once, uh, once some sort of, the bullets are being fed into it, it will automatically refill when it runs out. So definitely more convenient than the blowgun. Uh, up until this point, really, the blowguns were, or the blow darts were the only option if you wanted a very cool ranged weapon that I found anyway. Um, you know, aside from maybe some magic stuff, but anyway, I think uh, having a gun in the game is uh, Maybe cooler than we'd like to believe he also still does the blowing animation as if he's using the blow dart gun So that is the um, Monster 98k rifle mod. Let's continue onwards The next mod we're going to be looking at is called new icebox and it is a uh, it just simply adds a new icebox to the game. It's not configurable, but that does remind me before when we were talking about 
the um, bleeding mod, there are some, there are actually quite a few options that you can configure it for here. Even though all of them are written down in Chinese, I believe, they do have uh, tool tips that are in English. So like right here, it says blood from players, you can turn it on and off. Blood from animals, you can turn that on and off. Uh, who actually is going to bleed? It can be players, it can be nobody. Max bleeding 100%, how long blood will be red, how long blood will fade to dark color, and okay, the blood color. And then here we have uh, slow health regen, where um, 150 health points will automatically, re automatically regenerate within uh, five days. So those are some of the options that were for the bleeding mod that we covered in the beginning. But let's, uh, actually we're now going to be focusing on the new icebox mod, so let's resume that and take a look at it. So the new icebox mod was created by Jelly and Little Cute. Apparently uh, Little Cute did the coding for this and Jelly did the artwork. So right over here I've uh, placed down a couple of the new refrigerators, or what, are, what were they called? They're called new iceboxes. Not, not, uh, not the best name, I don't think. Uh, but I think we get the point, right? So if you go down here, you'll notice, once again, the the text for it is entirely in Chinese. This seems to be something of a recurring trend. A lot of the more interesting mods, at least that I consider interesting, tend to be made by uh, Chinese modders, which is rather interesting. The game seems to enjoy a healthy modding scene over there in, in those countries. Uh, yeah, so here is the uh, new refrigerator. As you'll notice, there is a uh, there are two different sections that are available here. One of them has uh, the standard refrigeration rates. If you look at a regular ice box, you'll notice that like, I put a lot of these items in these ice boxes at the same time. And the upper part is uh, decaying at the same rate. Uh, the lower ones are also decaying, but uh, at a much slower rate. Now, according to the documentation for this mod, and I'm, I can't be 100% sure, but the lower three, they're supposed to be permanently frozen unless you have the door open. So like when I have the door open here, According to the documentation, these three decay at the same rate that the normal nine do. But if you have the door shut, they will not decay at all. So in other words, you could put any sort of fruit that you never wanted to spoil in there, close the door, and then just never open it up again, and you should be golden. And that, that was a relatively simple mod, I think, overall. If you're interested in crafting one of them, of course, it's going to be in the food tab here, and it costs two blue gems... Uh, two gears and one electrical doodad. Uh, one thing that was not made quite clear is they made it sound as if it was possible to upgrade this using different kinds of gems, but I've never figured out a way to do that. I've looked in the configuration options to see if obviously you could um, increase the configuration cost, but nothing available there. So I'm not exactly sure what that was, uh, what, what the author was referencing when they hinted at that in the documentation because like i said before this is uh the, this is a chinese kind of mod so i believe the creator did does not speak english as a second language really and a lot of it was actually done through services like google translate but i could be wrong okay the last mod that we're going to be looking at is pokemon chosen by eu song so this mod adds Silver Leaf and Ho-Oh and several new items into the game. Now, I am not somebody who really has any knowledge of Pokemon beyond, you know, the surface cultural appeal of the game. Uh, but this mod introduces a lot of content, I think, and is therefore worthy of consideration. In addition to this, the author of it, I have covered one of their mods previously, and they actually appreciated my coverage of that and reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in this one. So if you think there's some sort of conflict of interest there, you know, that's a disclaimer that I'm giving you for it. So here I am with uh, one of the two characters. This is the one that automatically picks up stuff from the ground. And that ear shattering noise is the Oho, or the Ho-Oh. And this one is the small one. This is the small Ho-Oh. If that noise is a little bit too much for you, just let me know. I have no idea why it does that. There is a lot of mystery to be discovered in this mod, and I've been monkeying around with it for an hour and a half, and I still haven't come up with uh, real, any real answers yet. But this is what hatches from the egg. Can I attack it? Let's, let's kill it. There we go. I'm going to die from this. No, not really. I'm just gonna hit what- just- just shut up, dude. 
So that was a precious little uh, yoho or oho that I hatched from an egg. And I, I had to kill it because it just, it makes too much noise at the end of the day. Uh, one thing, I think it was actually draining my sanity just being close to it. Really weird. It's, it's a very... It's a very mysterious mod. Let's just put it that way. So eh, let's take a look at some of the additions that this mod has. In addition to the two characters, this is one of the two. She automatically picks up um, items off the ground, which I personally think is a travesty because you you probably don't realize how obnoxious that can get very quickly. But in addition to this, we have the magic tab and it has the addition of the clear bell and the sacred ash. I have no idea what the Sacred Ash does. Um, I experimented with some stuff that doesn't say in the documentation. Uh, but the Clear Bell has the ability to actually go ahead and summon the full-sized um, noisemaker. Um, but yeah, this is a boss, apparently, and um, it has some interesting attacks. Okay, I messed up on the previous one, but here we are again. And we have summoned the full-sized Yoho, or Oho, and we're going to assault it now. There we go. It's sending out the whirlwinds. In addition to that, it can also start me on fire. So there are a couple of interesting attacks going on right there. I was killed by fire. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, so there are some problems here. I think the overall premise is pretty good. Uh, the idea of introducing new bosses into the game is one that's not done a whole lot. Uh, it has some interesting attacks. It has some very... Very well-guarded secrets behind it. However, I would tone down the sound effects for it. Those are like, ear-piercing. And especially for the little one, the baby, a ho -oh, there's no way that you want to have a creature following you around for however many days it lasts, making that noise continuously. That is another degree above obnoxious, I think. Uh, but uh, then we have the issue with the actual character, the one that I was playing. I don't remember the name because I'm not a Pokemon fan. The ability to pick up items automatically is certainly an original one. However, I would make the case that is probably one of the most detrimental abilities marketed as a positive ability. So I'll, let me go on and explain here. Um, we have the lazy forager, right? And that's generally considered like one of the worst uh, ancient items that you can craft. It's, there is really no reason to get it at all. And why would you want a character that has that exact same ability that you can never turn off? We actually didn't get to see Silver's unique ability. It's kind of cool. They have the ability to pickpocket creatures with inventories as a frog would. So you didn't get to see that one. That was one of the other characters that were a part of this mod. Oh my goodness. I just, I have no idea how to end this. Um, this is one of those mods that I'm kind of at a loss for words because I'm sort of torn between, well, I don't feel confident enough in the material to say much of anything decisive about it. And at the same time, I kind of feel like I might be unduly biased towards it because the creator actually approached me. And then there's somebody that you feel you have a little bit more of an obligation to not be quite as critical towards. Uh, it's just a very funny situation that I don't find myself in very often, and therefore I'm kind of at a loss for words on it. But we'll, we'll just have to close it up here because uh, this can't go on forever. And oh my goodness, I just, I talk too much. So if you've liked any of the mods or you thought any of the mods looked promising here, go ahead and check them out. Uh, all the links to them will be in the description below this video. If you liked them, be sure to let their creators know. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.